Hey, welcome back, YouTube, or Twitch chat, or somebody. Welcome back, everybody. We have a lot of good responses to a video that I put up recently. It was called, What Will EHG Nerf Next? Let me, uh, let me pull up the video real quick here so you can see what was going on. Uh, we did two videos recently. One was called Nerf Bingo. One's called Nerf Bingo 2024. And uh, both of them are just like guesses about what EHG is going to be nerfing in the future. Some of these things I think should be nerfed. Some of these things could be nerfed. And some of these things I don't think they need to be nerfed, but I included them anyways as a way to round out the rest of the bingo cart. So that's where we're coming from. We got a lot of responses on the YouTube side, which is cool. That's good. One of these responses uh, got, me, got me scratching my head because I read... I read the first line of the response on YouTube comments and I thought to myself, this suspiciously looks like a dissertation. No, this suspiciously looks like a good comment. And I saw that Frozen Sentinel had already responded to it. And Frozen Sentinel is a level-headed person and I like his attitude. And if he's going to respond to somebody, it probably, hopefully, means that the comment is worth reading. So the first line of text already got me interested. So we're going to click record. We have Dread talking to us. Dread, say hi. Hello, this is Dread. And in today's video of the oh. Rat City Radio Podcast. <laughs> wait, what? That's not what this no, is No, wait, for? not not Rat. No, we're, this, is, this is Talking Heads. And we oh, are, know, you're, you're going to cosplay this person and you're going to read it to me. And yep, I, I think this is going to generate good conversation. Done. Enough of an introduction. Go, read it to me. Tell me. All right, we're going to start this off here. Yeah. I'm curious as to what the goal is with your nerves. Pause. Do you? Oh. That's okay. that's what go. got me. No, like I'm, I'm already locked in. What's the goal with nerves? Like on the one hand, this might be just like a shitter. I was going to do it by sentence by sentence. Oh, okay. I, I was going to say like this might be like a shitter trying yeah. to like waste all of my time and life energy. But like what is the goal with nerves? It's such a broad question that. Uh, it's almost hard to answer. Like I, I know how to answer it with humor and with laughter and by saying swear words and stuff, but like answering it in earnest is going to be a little bit harder. So I'm going to do what I can. Dread, keep going. I'm going to stop interrupting you. Do you just hate that mages are playable while sentinels suck? Do you want everything to suck? What is your idea of quote unquote balance? relative to the mobs we're facing which that's a very good part by mm -hmm. the way uh and what corruption level are you aiming at yeah all right so i guess we can stop there for a second like yep do i we're do I hate... sentence by sentence okay so do i other other people have commented like mate like sork is finally good why do you hate sork all of a sudden and it's like sork went from being garbage to being like an extreme outlier it is you you don't i don't i haven't played a sork i haven't played a sork enough to know exactly which node needs to be toned down but like the change to the mastery passive on sork is something that people have been asking for for a very long time like instead of having increased damage per mana cost they changed it to more damage per mana cost that's awesome that is that's exactly what the community and i have been looking for in sork for a long time i think for sork specifically here a lot of these people that are saying like, oh, Sork's finally good now. Why do you hate it now? Have never actually what? played old Sork. What the fuck? Like, they've never actually played old Sork. Like, they all played, like, other stuff and never actually touched Sork until now. Yeah, like, Sork... I, I had to say this very often during the 1.0 patch. Sork was not bad during the 1.0 patch. Sork was boring compared to Runemaster. And I don't know why you would play Sork in 1.0 compared to Runemaster. Runemaster had all the same things, but was more exciting and had more options available to them. Sork had no identity. Sork was not weak during 1.0. It was like eating bran flakes versus like having Cheerios in the closet, you know? Like, I'm going to go eat a bowl of Cheerios, dude. Yeah, sure. And like, there's no particular reason for it. And then... They, they made the cool change, which was the mastery passive giving more damage. They updated the mastery and like, which, which part of Sork is busted as fuck? I don't have the first hand uh, experience. I have two. There are two outliers here. Everything they did for Sork was amazing, except for two very specific things. They made the spark charge node, obviously. Which is, you, you look obviously, at that node and you're like, what the right. fuck? You okay, know, is yeah. okay. Uh, keep going, but my question is like, is that node still OP yeah. if if Frostclaw didn't exist? Uh, 
it'll be still good, but it wouldn't be overpowered. But it's going to actually lead into the second part of this. Go on. Uh, as someone who has actually played a lot of Sork, I can tell you the biggest problem that they added was they did all these changes to the big mana stuff for Sork yeah. without acknowledging Static Orb's existence. Yeah. Because Static Orb was always a skill that was good despite being a, a Sork. You know how like I keep saying that? Like, this build is good despite being a Sork. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This build is just good. Uh, Static Orb had that. Like, you saw the Chunky Pop Eclipse. Like, it was doing just fine before this. So yes. what happens is you end up, you oh, like, you did not take into account Static Orb when they changed it. Yeah. Like, but like for instance, that, so... if you were to play like a Volcanic Orb Sork right now, yeah. it wouldn't feel overpowered. It would do a lot of damage, but it wouldn't uh -huh. feel overpowered. So you have you have like static orb on the one side of the spectrum, which is like it's got two separate nodes that scale more damage off of mana cost and like increase your mana cost as well. And like you know, scale off max mana, like it's just so much synergy sitting there. And it's already been a good bouncer in the past. And then you have on the other side of the spectrum things like black hole, whatever the fuck arcane ascendance is supposed to be, like these old fucking skills that just have really old skill trees and are more like mostly bad like I, I i get that meteor is a good skill but the skill tree could really use a facelift i mean meteor right now is in the most acceptable state it's ever been in yeah but the As skill tree is atrocious it's so bad oh, i completely yeah agree. yeah like and like we we, we have we have like a it. we have a modern mastery with sork but we have like these ancient skills that have just like not been adjusted around what the current state yeah. of sork is I think so like, the biggest problem here yeah, right now with Static Orb is, you know, the nodes that give you like the little orbs, those scale with yeah. everything else on the tree. Yeah, they sure and do. That is like the biggest problem. I'm trying to find the numbers on the Scatter Blast right now on LE Tools, but it is not giving me anything currently. As it currently stands on LE Tools, it says that the same node. The, the scatter blast, the smaller orbs mm -hmm. are doing just as much damage as the big orbs are doing. Now, whether that's a design problem, it was an accidental or whatever, right? Whatever it is. But right now, if you go and look in LE tools, it has the same exact lightning explosion. There's no mm -hmm. lines about it. I'll have to ask Tunk. Tunk would know the answer to this mm -hmm. question. But yeah. So essentially, you just have a node that's giving you like 400% more damage a la carte, just like Frost Claw. And I think that's, hey, that's suspicious, it. isn't it? Yeah. Just yeah, having I these think, extra hits baked in. Yeah, I think like that's the biggest problem. And that's like probably what they should nerf. And I think Static Orb would be fine. All right, I so think that like they, they should probably nerf the damage on those. Let's things. let's get back to uh, Meteor is good in spite of its skill tree. It matters how boring the skill is. Yeah, there you go. So let's get back to this YouTube commenter. Mm -hmm. They said, do you want everything to suck? And the answer is yes, I do. Okay, so they, <laughs> they said, what's your idea of balance? And this is a really hard question to, to answer because it's it's such a simple question. And it's, it's like, I'm going to try the humorous approach first. So what's your idea of balance? In, instead of having like S tier skill and then A, B, C, D, F, Last Epoch has S tier and then like and everything else starts at like D tier because the gap between the OP things, whether they're bugs or not, is so huge compared to like the not OP things. Like it's just too much. So what is the, the point of balance? So, so, it's like, well, what's your idea of balance? What's your point of balance? The point of balance is that when a person... The, the longevity of an action RPG based on re-rolling characters and trying different things, which these these games, a large part of the replayability and, and the longevity of a game like this is like, oh, I just sunk, you know, a thousand hours or 500 hours into playing a mage. I want to go try playing this game as a paladin next. or I want to go try it as a beastmaster next. And the point of balance is that you don't feel like a fucking idiot when you try playing something else. Like, you played the OP thing, your next build should be, like, you know, with the same video game, not just a completely different video game. Forget about Gap, we have a little chasm between OP and Bort builds. We do, that's good. Um, so the, the point of balance is that you can have sufficient tools 
on any starting class and any mastery in order to gain strength and live the fantasy of like a of like a power fulfillment or a power um uh increase what power fulfillment wish wish fulfillment what's that called like you start weak and you get strong whatever oh, that is like yeah power, power fantasy about, yeah. sure but yeah. like you need you need to have those tools so like when you talk about falconer falconer it never looks when you're building your falconer and getting more damage you never scratch your head you never you know go on an adventure in order to find out where i get my more damage from you never like you never divert from the path that you're on in order to solve a problem i think a good difference is think of like an rpg as a puzzle and you have like a forge guard which is like a fifty thousand piece puzzle with on a blue background so it's impossible to fix right but then Falconer is like four pieces that are all differently colored. Right. I think that is a good example of like why this matters so much is most for most people, uh, the puzzle pieces, putting them together. Like, for instance, like, do you think a puzzle would be entertaining if like it was literally just four pieces? I don't think a puzzle would be well, entertaining uh, if it to, was just four to, pieces. To be fair, to be fair, people enjoy video games in different ways. Some people, like you and me, yeah. we enjoy figuring out where to get our next piece of defense from, mm -hmm. where to get our next piece of damage from. Oh man, wouldn't it be okay? Wouldn't it be cool if I use this piece of technology from that build in this build so that I could juice more damage up and, and bring this build to the next level? That's really fun to put together builds like that. But like but to as, my counterpoint to that, Diablo okay. 4 exists. I don't like the idea of like just play a different video game. I <laughs> agree, but there's also an extent of like if you're looking for a specific experience, yeah, then and you're trying to look for it in a game that doesn't have it, you're going to always be left sad about it or not happy. Like sure. for instance, like let's say I try to go play Fortnite and I want an RTS. I'm never going to have that ever in my life, right? Yeah. But the problem is is like, well, like, does the game need to change for that? No, like not at all. Like for instance, right, right. if Ellie wants to go down the direction of things being more interesting than just put in four puzzle pieces or whatever, right? Which they have clearly stated that that's what they want. They don't want it to just be, mm -hmm. <coughs> you know, Diablo 4 in that regard, right? Uh, that's what they want. And this person, of course, in this regard, and a lot of people in this gen general ideology, it's like, well, I want Ellie to be the brainless game, but I also want to be one of the cool kids of playing. Like, I, I want to figure it out, but I don't want other people to have an easy time figuring it out. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, you want to feel smart, don't you? And like, I talk about this when I make build guides. I'm like, like this, mm -hmm. there are builds in Last Epoch that make you want to explain the build to somebody else. They make you want to bring out an Excel document or Microsoft Paint in order to explain it to somebody because it makes you feel smart and you want to talk about your build. And that's cool. That's wonderful for me. So what, what's interesting, when they say, like, God, I'm so happy that I clicked record. They said, what's your idea of balance? And but the first thing that I said was, like, these all these different starting classes should exist in the same video game. They should have the same, or, like, they should have tools, not just one tool. They should have a plethora of tools that they can use in new and interesting dynamic ways so that you can put your character together and make it, you know, smash content. But, you know... To, to their credit or you know to 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 bring up a different perspective you don't need that to exist you could potentially have a video game where falconer is op and it scales less damage taken and more damage based off of dexterity and literally the only thing you do is like stack dexterity and health that that build could exist some might argue that it does and then you could have Forge Guard, which is just like, you know, a hundred times worse and very, very difficult to put together. That's not necessarily a bad video game. That's two different video games wrapped up into one that happen to have the same campaign and the same end game. That's, that's basically like putting on the veterans boots that nerf your build. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like that's, that's not necessarily a bad video game. If that's EHG's intent, I would be shocked. I don't think I mean, that's, that's a good idea. Where a lot of this conversation ends up becoming is talking about 
what is EHG's intent sure. or, game de- or game developer's intent yeah. uh, in general. And a game developer's intent is to have someone play their video game yeah. for a longer amount of time. Right. And to do that, it needs to not be as basic as a four piece puzzle. Yeah, there like- are games like that that exist and they don't want to compete in that market. They want to compete in the market that, you know, people who want a 50 piece puzzle, let's say not a, not a hundred thousand piece puzzle like Path of Exile, sure, but sure. they at least want it to be like a 50 piece puzzle to a hundred piece puzzle, but they definitely don't want a four piece puzzle. They want somewhere in the middle. And the problem is, is like, well, if stuff is a four piece puzzle in a 50 puzzle game, right. In this regard, right. Yeah. Like it's not, it's not doing what it's supposed to be doing. And the, and the developers probably feel the same way in this regard. Like yeah. they, they probably realize they messed up with Sork, but I, I'll be honest, uh, this is something we've talked about before. And I'm happy that Sork came out and it was OP as balls. Cause now all they need to do I, is I agree with down. you. I, I, uh, I, I do I'd tend to, I, I do like tend to think strike. that I think new things <laughs> should be OP and, and exciting and over to uh, over tuned. Like, Call it like, oh, it's it's just pay to win, FOMO. you know, get the next thing, FOMO whatever. Get oh, your FOMO, right? Like, I yeah. honestly, I think that's fine. I would rather have something be OP when it's first released. So, I like, I think there is like an extent to it too. Like, I think if it, if Sork was just OP for one point one, and they finally brought it in line in one point two, I think it's fine. Yeah. But it can't just be like, oh, it's like this for fifty patches or whatever. Right, 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 right. <laughs> um, like, what's what's your idea of balance? Um. I just, you need to have ways to build damage on all classes, I, I guess. Like, okay, so what, what's your idea of balance? My, my, my idea, my, the outcome, the, like the perception when you measure these things, so like I need an idea of balance is that arena ladders would be similar across the board. I, I guess, I guess that's it, right? And then the, the kinds of things that people brag about on YouTube or on Reddit or on Discord would be spread out across the board. That's I I don't know what balance I, is exactly, but I think me, I think when you measure it, like like the perception of it would be like you have people bragging about their OP Beastmaster builds. You have people bra- bragging about how cool their you know Forge guards are, but like you don't you you only see people flexing how good their wrong warp is and how quickly they can kill with static orb. That's all I see people flexing. Yeah, I think for me, this is going to be a long tangent, by the way. Go, go, go. But like for balance, from the view of a game developer, not from the player, okay? Because, you know, game balance from Mm -hmm. the view of the player is like, Mm -hmm. or it's amazing, right? But from a game developer's point of view, this is only a problem in games that have longevity, so, for instance, if we just, like, made a game, like, you just sat down mm-hmm. and you just coded a game and that was it. And oh, you mean, like, like, like not a live service game is what you're talking yeah, about? Yeah. Okay, I hear you. That's usually the word used, yeah. I mean, it doesn't have to be a live service game. Like, for instance, chess isn't a live service game, and it hasn't been balanced for thousands of years, right? Uh, but, uh, hundreds, but go on. Hundreds, <laughs> well, whatever. You get what I mean. But like stuff like that, right? But because of the fact that they want this to be a live service product, uh, they have to care somewhat about this because MTG had this same exact problem where they're like, oh, as we add more things, we are incentivized to create better and better mm-hmm. things and stronger things to get people to buy said product and to come back and play again. In this case, come back and play again for last Bucks mm-hmm. games, right? And what ends up happening is you end up with power creep, right? A large amount of power creep. Power creep doesn't exist in a game that doesn't get updates anymore. Like for instance, Diablo 2, say what you will, like there isn't that much power creep in it because it hasn't been changed in forever other than like D2R. But like, I'm talking about like literally the same Diablo two that came out of the box like 20 years ago or whatever. Right. Mm -hmm. That game doesn't have power creep because there's no content to be added to give said power creep. Sure. People have found new stuff back in the day, but the game itself hasn't changed relatively much, but because Ellie wants to be a game that wants to keep going for years and years and years and to build up an audience and to keep them going, they have to care about 
the longevity of the game, which means they have to release more content. And as they release more content, that content needs to be on par or clear near Mm -hmm. what content exists before. And usually, you know, because of this, they have an incentive to make things that are better. But the pro uh, MTG found out that what you can do is if you just have a baseline of what things are in terms of power level in this regard in this game, right? Uh, and you bring everything back down to that power level every, every year or two or however long they rotate, right? Mm -hmm. Then you can keep the experience going without having to give gigantic amounts of power creep like uh and in this case in last epoch's case right as they are adding more and more stuff they need to make sure the stuff that it already exists either is on par or equal equivalent or very close to like the content that is like coming out mm -hmm. right all and, right let's 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 move yeah. on we we, we literally yeah. read like three sentence two, we can two go to three the next one, three yeah. sentences from this person and again, I suspect that this YouTube comment is worth reading, which is why we're reading yeah. it. So that they said, what's your what's your idea of balance? And we, we tried to give an idea of balance relative to the mobs we're facing and what corruption level are you aiming at? So we've said this before, like corruption level, EHG thinks about corruption 300. 300 is the point at which all items in the game are accessible to you because you're past 200. So you can get the Omnis Amulet, you're in Empowered Monolith, you can get your Ravenous Void. And 300 is where you line up with Aberroth. So like you can clear 300, um, 300 corruption monoliths, the harbingers there, and you can kill Aberroth. Not one shot Aberroth, but you know, five or six minute fight, you can slog through it and you're able to kill the end game boss. That's what EHG is looking at. 300 to Dread and I is fucking low. And the way that corruption scales these days is very strange because 600 corruption is twice as difficult as 300 corruption. And that's nothing because most good builds are destroying 300 corruption, which means you're also destroying 600 corruption. So a big part of the corruption level that you're aiming at comes from favor gain, which of course only got introduced in 1.0 with the favor mechanics and the two guilds. But uh 1000 corruption technically is the correct answer for what a corruption level you're looking at because that's when you start to get a lot of um diminishing returns off of going higher for favor gains 500 corruption i've heard some competitive players who i respect saying that speed clearing 500 corruption is completely acceptable for calling it a good build which I love hearing that perspective from people that I respect. I think that's great. Dread and I, we both tend to say like 700 or 800 corruption. I, I don't think either you or I, Dread, are looking at like 1,000 corruption. Like you don't need 1,000 corruption to be a good build. Like it's, it's not that so big a deal. So my view on that is whatever is an acceptable amount of favor per hour. Because if they change the game, they change it to the point where favor caps at 300, like the favor game, it just mm -hmm. completely hard caps. That is the new end goal post. Mm -hmm. Be that is the the sad reality of a uh, infinite system with a reward system on the side. Uh, if if like for instance, if rewards just kept scaling and kept scaling in a significant then manner, then you would say three thousand. Yeah, I would say whatever you can fucking mm -hmm. get to mm -hmm. right. And but in this regard for this, I think seven hundred right now is what I would call for someone who plays the game a lot, an acceptable amount of favor per hour that doesn't make me want to go and play a different game. Yeah, so relative <laughs> to the mobs we're facing, let's put that on hold, this line of text, because we don't know whether the the new monsters being added to the game are going to be like mainstays. We don't know about the transfusion caskets. We don't know about the elite monsters. There's like there's a couple things during the 1.1 refresh event that we're not quite sure about how they're going to look in the future. So like let's let's discount those for the for the moment. So it's like not not not, not talking. You don't about like it. getting hit for 10k at 300 corruption. Come I on, I, dude. I something about them ought to change. Maybe the visibility or the size of them or the, or the perception of damage or how quickly they deal damage or whether they, I think what I, happened. Maybe the ability is like visible, like something, something could change there. Was they like turned up the knob, mo like the knob, like the, the mod, like the, mm -hmm. the knob, right? They turned up the knob, but they forgot that they get rare modifiers too. You know that they can get like crit, increased damage, damage when hit. You know they can get all those. I don't, right? I don't mind the increase in difficulty. It's just like, yeah, it's, it's, I don't mind. Last Epoch spent a lot of time not being particularly difficult. So this one kind of blindsided us. It's not necessarily a bad thing. We just got to address it. So let's, you you're gonna keep cosplaying. 
you're going to read this yeah. next thing. Okay. I am. Take it away. And are you evaluating this with the best in slot three LP, perfectly rolled, perfectly slammed legendary gear? Abs I can tell you no. And just keep going. Keep going. <laughs> uh, that's what a lot of people showcasing their builds, quote unquote, uh, are doing, courtesy of Merchant's Guild. Dude, I'll be honest. I've seen yeah, that Just keep fucking going. Too. Keep going. Okay. In this specific part. But, and obviously, that does make a lot of builds look rather excessively strong. But it is the same with gear that 99% of the player base are likely to have. Okay. For 99% of the player base, yeah. there's a lot of trash at the bottom of the 99%. Let's not concern ourselves with 99% of the player base. Let's concern ourselves with a player base who know what they're doing, who consistently make builds that, you know, get to 500, 600, 700, 1,000 corruption. Like, we, we, we literally do not need to talk about people who only do the campaign, do one echo, and then leave the game. We, we, don't, need to, we don't need to talk about 99%. The elitism. The we, elitism. No, that's not important to talk about 99%. Oh, oh, Every, I'm going to clip this out of content. Clip it out of context. Con context. All right, 99% yeah. of people. Okay, if you can't, possibly like i get it like you're just using this as a as a way to make your point but me i'm gonna make my point 99 percent of the people that's too many people we don't I mean, need to talk mike even that. said it you remember like with the the like one percent of people getting to 300 corruption or something stupid like that okay if if one percent of people get to 300 corruption then we should be doing like 0.7 percent that's who we should yeah. care about well that that says more about um uh, other problems with the game it but, might yeah. that's true okay so are you evaluating this with absolute perfect best in slot three lp slam gear no i'm not i as a cuf gamer who gets fucked by rng over and over i'm evaluating this with like one good tier seven affix slammed on your gear or two reasonable tier six affixes or like you know a tier six and a tier five slammed on your two lp gear i think i think yeah. two lp gear two lp boots two lp gloves two lp like 2LP anything. 2LP is not a difficult thing to get in COF. And I am personally currently working on a build where I'm trying to play a Paladin and I feel like my gloves only have one LP. I'm using Wing Guard, unique gloves. And I feel like, you know what? It's really not going to take that much effort before I get 2LP gloves. So I really ought to put in the effort to get 2LP gloves. That's what I would call. Am I evaluating this with absolutely perfect 3LP? No, absolutely not. Showcasing the builds? No, absolutely not. Nope. Merchant's Guild? Nope. No, that's that's not what I'm evaluating any of this based off of. I feel like we should just move on to the next paragraph. Is there anything else I mean, you I want to say? I can tell here? you what I... Uh, yeah, you, me, you, you tell me. I think we can move on. For me, you tell me. I can I can give insight considering I am a Merchant's Guild. You owner. are, yeah. I don't know what he's getting at. Like, the market, this patch specifically, is very dead. Like, don't get me wrong. I have access to items I probably couldn't get in COF, but like my gear, I have like uh, to give you an idea here. I right now on my character as I'm playing, I have a two LP Ghostmaker, I have a two LP Flares Pride, a two LP Valdir's Chalice, a three LP Thornslinger, which is like stupid but easy to get, right? Then like a one LP Blood of the Exile, and then maybe some T7 rolls here or there. That is like around the average that I would rate most builds. After that, like it gets excessive. And whenever I talk about balance, I don't talk about it with like gear at all. I'm talking about from a no gear perspective, like out of the box. Like for instance, Sork out of the box is pretty crazy. Even with like normal rare gear, it's pretty crazy. Even if you don't get to a thousand mana, it's still pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. Falconer without any gear is pretty crazy right oh, it's it, it, like it's it's so good and it's also comparatively so different than yeah. the bad masteries uh -huh. you know like 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 yeah. not, not bad but like underpowered not new like things like you know even even druid or beastmaster you know, any sentinel you know what i mean like and part of this too is like uh a, I, i'm gonna give a good example here no one cares if a build is good if it has good gear, if yeah, you've there you gone go. out of your way to go farm two 1LP red rings, all this and all that, and your build is deleting Aberroth and shitting on it, and mm -hmm. it's the same build you've been playing for the past three to four weeks, no one really cares. It's fine. There's nothing wrong with that, right? Eventually, like, it's an RPG after all. We're meant to have some fun. Yes, right? yes. And But what I mean is there is a significant difference between an Erasing Strike build right now, like that 
crit or racing strike mm -hmm. bolt splitter build mm -hmm. that does not have good gear versus a falconer that does not have good gear yes. and i would say the racing strike world splitter build is a good build yes. and like in the like if we're going to ignore all the broken stuff like i think that's a poster child of what i would want a build to eventually be right and in this in this like thing like with no gear like all right. very, very i i i want we got so many players. paragraphs left yeah, to go guy yeah. keep right, you read to me you're gonna keep cosplaying yep. tell me the third paragraph ehg mike why well, he's got to bring him in this ehg mike said it nicely most players never see tier four jurla that's because they're stuck in okay, can, can we pause can we pause uh yeah i i need to pause yeah. if a player doesn't get to tier four jura i don't care about <laughs> Ow. their opinion on top end game balance oh my goodness because Perry, you are because tier four, <laughs> tier four that's like that's like saying like oh like my like these players haven't beaten the campaign in path of exile um we should listen to them for game balance like okay you could listen to them for game balance when it comes to balancing around the campaign you could you really really could and you could yeah. balance the early like, game hey, you Hillic, could... Hillic keeps killing me can you like nerf Hillic? like that's that's completely like if we're going to talk about like Hillock and like Hillock's too hard or whatever, then yeah, you can listen to that. But yes, if you can't even get past Hillock, why would I listen to your but, opinions but, about but Uber you? But but you you could listen to those people based on new player experience. You could listen to them based on early game, um, non min maxed gearing. You could listen to them based on all. You you could listen to all kinds of uh, all kinds of feedback that those people would give people who don't get to tier four jewelry on the other hand that's not what we're talking about <laughs> that, not is, we're that talking is that about. is out of scope yeah. of the current conversation how big a percentage do you get to slam movement speed in the blood of the exile is not irrelevant you reckon those 50 or so people are the core of the entire game should be balanced around yes i do i do i do because when i say balanced around i mean the end game i don't mean the early game because early game paladin is great. Early game beastmaster. Okay. <laughs> uh, after level fifteen, it's great. Yeah, after I was level it. fifteen, it's great. <laughs> I caught myself it's... there for a second because because primalist leveling fucking sucks. But <laughs> yeah. as soon as you got to level fifteen, it's great. Yeah. yeah but yeah, you like go. you you reckon those fifty people are the core of the game should be balanced around for end game? Yes. I also think it's oh, way it's, more. It's I, think, I, also, I think it's way more than fifty people. Except okay, you don't on. have to ever do Jurla to hit one hundred and high corruption. They can, uh, if you hit a hundred on T like Jurla and like never actually interact with T four Jurla, you haven't been playing the game long enough because you know that there are end game items that you would want to have at that point and end game that items that you want to slam as well for yeah. Jurla. Like that is such a very specific like counterpoint i don't know how to rate it now now you you could say to we're speaking to the person in twitch chat who said that you could say you don't ever have to do soul fire tier one yeah. and i would agree with you because soul fire sucks and you could say you don't ever have to do lightless arbor tier one which is true because lightless arbor sucks <laughs> but like temporal sanctum you need to do temporal sanctum at some point so that that's Although not a good example the devs like bounce around too like they All know right, so, that jurla is like that all right, ahead. next up. Should I read this? Or do you want to read this? The oh, Frostclaw no, thing. All right, keep going, Frostclaw. I'm not going to interrupt you. I'm going right. to try not to. Go on. Well, we got to finish this part. Uh, yeah. How big a percentage do you think uh, do you think get to slam movement speed into their blood of, blood of the exiles? Oh, no. He's complaining about me. He's complaining about me because that's the uh, that's the blood of the exile I hit with T7 movement speed early on that I used in every single build. Every oh, single no. build. Oh, no. Oh no, I'm Nerf being it. called out. <laughs> Keep going. You know, well, having multiple red rings. Okay, that is not me. Uh, you reckon those 50 or so people, the core of the entire gaming should be bounced around? No, I'm talking about the dude who played COF in like two days and delete Aberroth in like 20 seconds in COF with Static Orb. Like, yeah. that's what we're talking about. Now, yeah. obviously, this viewer does not know of that build because it's a video of mine and no one watches me. So we, we know that for sure. But it's like, ser seriously, though, like, like if you have seen some of the budget stuff that people have done with Falconer and Static Orb, you'd understand what we're talking about here. Uh, <clears throat> but yeah, if you have comments on that one. I, I don't. <laughs> 
<laughs> like, yeah. like we'd say like the budget stuff like even even like a top, about like day one day two yeah like like, like day play one falconer. day one bleed falconer is like better than yeah. week four forge guard yeah like that's that's the game balance that we're talking yeah about. but keep going Let, let's go to this frost claw right. line of time. i tried a frost claw ignite build on my level 90 sort frost claw ignite is pretty good right now yeah I uh, heard. it looked pretty good in the youtube video this youtube video i thought why not see what it feels like i didn't really have the gear for it but i figured that maybe i was close enough get some elemental dot stuff here and there and after all but in reality it felt awful without the right gear the ignites just don't scale hard enough and even frost claw doesn't apply them that is that That's is that, that right, that right <laughs> wait there. a oh minute oh my god oh my yeah. frost, like frost claw right there. top That's end frost top end frost claw can apply like 500 ignites in like a second like, yeah, that is yeah. that is that is a red flag. Yeah. Without the right gear, the damage is too slow, and you get crowded by mobs. Even at 100 corruption, it was uncomfortable. No. I would like him to send his planner, but like I, I yeah, that we call that pebcag. You ever heard that before? I don't know what that Pe is. Pebcag is problem problem exists between computer and and chair. Oh, key, keyboard and chair. Yeah, yeah <laughs> it's something else. Usually, going I try on. to not bring that up because uh, I'm a dick. But. Uh, oh wow okay so this, well, this person no, i mean in this case this case he's giving a piece of criticism and like we're we're allowed i'm talking about like if someone just came <laughs> into my twitch chat and was like my build sucks or whatever right and um, like, look at his build you know in this yeah. case he's he's opening himself to so i've i've seen regard. youtube videos i i know youtube exi uh, videos exist for ignite frostclaw maybe the guide is bad maybe the youtube video is bad um, yeah, I know, I, I know, it. I know people who are very competitive, uh, last year, gamers who have a very high opinion of ignite frost claw. So maybe the video was yeah. bad. Maybe the guide was bad. Maybe this person built it incorrectly. Right. That, that might exist. Yeah. Yeah. That might be a problem, but let's continue here. Yeah. Let's so, uh, <clears throat> so yes, you can make frost claw. Yes. You can make frost claw nice and cheap and snipe from off screen because of how it targets. So frost claw ailment sort definitely. Frostclaw ailment sort definitely does work at the fundamental level, and therefore it must be possible to nerf it to the point where it won't work unless you pour crazy amounts of currency into it, and even then it won't actually be good. But why would we want that to happen? You know what? That's a good question. I, I is an over nerfing too bad? That's uh, a good question. Yeah, obviously over nerfing is too bad. Like if something gets nerfed hard enough that no one fucking uses it, then that was a bad nerf. If things get nerfed and people still use it, that's a good nerf. Um, if things, if something gets nerfed, yeah, then a lot, a lot of nerfing is psychological as well. If you take like ten percent of damage off the top of something that's totally OP, it's very likely to continue to be a very strong skill. Um, when it comes to nerfs and people see nerfs and the and like the memes get propagated on social media, it's a psychological thing. People want to explore other builds instead. So like, for example, you are exploring non damage over time, uh, Sentinel builds, and you're exploring other ways to get damage other than relying on volatile reversal. So mm -hmm. you know that a nerf is incoming and it makes you want to experiment with different ways of solving that puzzle. So that kind of a nerf, hopefully when we see it in the future, that kind of a nerf is a good nerf. Um, they, what they say, they said, should we make it terrible? I want the baseline of a skill to be killing like white monsters when you are first when you're first able to get to a point of getting that skill online like getting frost claw and then you have frost claw hitting five different times and maybe a few more nodes in the skill tree if you have a wand on of the appropriate level you should be killing white monsters easily you should be basically one-shotting white monsters at whatever particular level that is like level 30 40 50 but like when you get higher levels, like maybe it takes two hits to kill the white monsters, and maybe it takes, you know, an uncomfortable amount of time to kill like elite monsters or like boss monsters. And you should find yourself want wanting more damage. If you want that kind of experience where your base level is skill and you get that nice gradual increase in power, you should play a melee build. You should play multi strike. You should play a forge guard. You should play something that realistically kind of sucks when you play one of these skills or masteries that's super strong like a falconer or like a like a like a you know uh, static or build or like a 
I want it to work out of the box, man. Yeah, like, it, but it's going to work out of the box, but it's also going to scale without you realizing you're scaling it. So you're not going to get the good power mm. fantasy. You're not going to realize that you're increasing in power. You're just going to like, whoops, I guess my, my build's OP. I'm just going to keep going. And then you're going to lose interest because you're never actually pushing back against anything and the game's not pushing back against you. Yeah. For me, this specific conversation uh, topic... I think there is a very good example of when you nerf too hard mm. and like <laughs> static orb orbit, I think is a very good example of this where oh, they yeah. just kind of went gung ho for no reason. Uh, and like, that's a good one. Uh, stat, uh, surf and strike. That's another good one. Uh, I don't know what, what happened there, but it, whatever. Surf and strike. You and I liked it. I know. And like, there is something to be said about over nerfing things. But I think the way I would like it to go, this is just my personal opinion, okay? I would like things to come out in a stronger state than they should be, and then if they accidentally nerf it too hard, it's not that big of a deal because they can always come back and fix it. Mm. Like, it's not, like, but it depends on what you mean by over-nerf because there's a very, very large road between, mm -hmm, like, mm -hmm. quote-unquote over-nerfing it. Like, for instance, like, imagine if Frost God did, like, 20% less damage. Everyone's like, oh, they over-nerfed it! And, like, you're still deleting Aberroth. Like, no, it's seconds. still like, pretty fucking fine. Yeah, Let's see, so like, what... They said, and therefore, it must also be possible to nerf at the point where it won't work unless you pour crazy amounts of currency into it. There are, there are builds out there that still suck if you pour crazy amounts of currency into them. That's I know, I when, when, you, when, you, when you say what's your idea of balance, this hits it right. It must also yep. be possible to nerve to the point where it doesn't work unless you pour up crazy amounts of currency. In. There are builds, there's a there lot of builds out there builds that you right that's that just like, like that. if, if you had perfect, you know, four LP gear, it would still kind of suck. There's a lot of builds like that in Last Epoch, and I, I would say like there it's a thing you can do, but it's not worth playing and it's not worth your time. Unless you're fucking in love with it for some reason, but yeah, there's a lot of those. Do it. That's why mm. I've been doing it. Obviously. So well, this this next line of text, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep going here. They said, if it offends you that Frostclaw can apply so many ailments, then do consider that a Sork doing that is ultimately just a significantly worse Rune Master. Uh, uh, have they been keeping up with stuff? <laughs> That's just a question. Wait, of, uh, they've been keeping up with stuff. Yeah. Okay, so I started out this YouTube video by saying, like, I think this person's going to have good things to say. To be fair, like, it is kind of, like, elitist for us to say, like, have they been keeping up with stuff? Like, it it is elitist. But, it, but it's at fine. the same time, they haven't been, like, doing, like, Magic the Gathering levels of changes where there's a secret layer every five seconds, yeah, okay, right? So, so like <laughs> current, so in 1.0, the issue was Sork was not bad. Sork was fine, but it was much more boring than a Rune Master build. And Rune Master had so many exciting options. In 1.1, what happened was that Rune Master got a lot of nerfs, a lot of war generation nerfs, not as exciting, no changes to like make up for the nerfs. Um, and then you know, they mean, didn't. It just they, showed how bad Runic Invocation right. is. Right. And then, and then like Runic Invocation, like nothing really got buffed there. Just like a lot of nerfs across the board, nothing really exciting. So a lot of psychological aspects that went in the patch 1.1 patch or the 1.1 the dichotomy between Sork and uh, Rune Master. And then on the flip side, Sork is fucking Giga Chad. You know, be careful who you make fun of in middle school. So like, do consider that Sork is ultimately a significantly worse Rune Master. Like, buddy, don't make your argument worse than it already is. So they said, <clears throat> that's. That's what they were in all of 1.0. Why go back? And if you take ailments off Frostclaw, then what exactly do you leave Rune Master with? So I don't think it's a Frostclaw issue. I think it's a Rune Master being bad. Um, and we and we could we could do an entire episode talking to each other about Rune Master. Um, and we might at some point. That that might be fun. You know, mm -hmm. <laughs> maybe have a guest on or something to talk about Rune Master. But. I, I really do think that in this video that I recorded talking about nerf bingo, what will they nerf the next you know, episode 2024? When I talked about it, I said that when you make a skill hit multiple times, oftentimes it gets a ailment application rate penalty. Warpath has that spinning umbral blades just recently got that as well. I and it's think, still fine, by the way. And it's still cold, totally fine. I think that when... Okay, so... I think that when you make Frostclaw hit multiple times with that note on the bottom right, uh, Volley of Glass, I think it's called, when they do that, it probably should gain an application rate penalty. 
the my rationale for that not only like i just described but they also made it so it takes away the area tag which was good that was one of the very first pieces of feedback in 092 when Runemaster master came out because i feel that when you take away the area explosion it should no longer have the area tag so that it no longer works the area war generation node in Runemaster's master's mastery so that's a good thing that they did that i think they should take it a step further and make it ailments so they said if you take ailments off what exactly does frost cloud do with the Runemaster? master it was just disregard the Runemaster master comment because we can do like hours of commentary general, on master yeah. but just like general, what yeah. like what is what is think of the frost claw i have i've played crit frost claw it's literally good like <laughs> what will i do if i can't apply ailments you scale crits just I mean, punch like, things i promise you it's here, good you know elemental nova frost claw builds are strong even if like for some yeah. reason, Frostclaw did no damage. Yeah, and even if you <laughs> even if you did an ailment penalty, you could just be a, a, a elemental nova build. It's like you just well, said. the yeah. way I would want them to do it if they're gonna do that, I would like them to make the ailment penalty exist on the five thing or whatever, yeah. right? Or yeah, make yeah. it do less damage, but then make it so the mana cost penalty isn't as high. Sure, you can do that, and like maybe yeah. you want to make it not hit the forty mark. That's the thing. Okay, so yeah. let's let's, let's well, keep going. Yeah. So they they said, to my knowledge, there's really only a grand total of two things about Sork that's broken. Me, Perry, I'm listening because I don't know exactly what it is about uh, sword. I think there's two things. He he's right with that. You you, you think you right. think both of his things are right? Just static orb just being too strong overall. Yes, and existing before sword. Yes, and then the the spark charge node. If it wasn't for those two things, because so, if we're gonna talk about directly only sork shenanigans and not just mage overall, uh, that is correct. So and they said really they said this. Enigma adds uncapped plus two int per dam or the uh, flat damage per intelligence to spark charges a lot of damage to scale with increased and more and, and like yeah like the the whole um the whole suite of intelligence scaling stuff is fucking strong and enigma works too well into it especially with sork's new spark charge on hit paired with hitting 40 times per cast with um with frost claw recast stuff it's like the the whole suite of stuff has been too strong when I was making that video talking about like nerf bingo, what will EH ner ner nerf next? Somebody said, why don't you put, or I guess after the video was published, they said, why don't you put like intelligence stacking on that list? And you know, intelligence stacking could be something that EHD potentially wants to go after. Cause like the whole like suite of things that you get off of intelligence is so strong. But the fact that it gives you ward retention on rune master, it gives you cooldown recovery speed. It gives you flat damage. If you're playing spark charges, it gives you uh, percent increased critical strike chance. It gives you percent increased damage. If you're playing a spell blade, it gives you flat critical strike chance as well. Like it just scales so, so well in all these different ways. And like the fact that it even gives you ward retention means like it's basically HP. And like strength, strength is great. Don't get me wrong. Strength is really good. The fact that you can stack strength and get percent increased damage on a strength skill and armor, that's good. But it's not seven different things good. It's just two things good. So like strength is nowhere near the whole suite of things that get buffed when you stack intelligence up. Like maybe that's something that EHG wants to go after. I don't know what exactly it ought to be. Well, part of it as well is... Uh... If we're going to talk about strength versus uh, intelligence mm -hmm. right now, part of the problem is everyone gets armor, not everyone gets ward retention, right? Mm -hmm. Like, int is the only viable way right now to get large amounts of ward retention in classes that aren't just mage or acolyte or whatever, right? And strength, everyone can get really good armor. You just put on some uniques, right? Mm -hmm. Like, and that's part of it too. Sork is the best. Some people just jealous. We, we've been making this joke all during 1.1. 1. 1. We say that it, this is a Sork world and we're just living in it. Like everything else kind of sucks. And like, uh, are we yeah, jealous? We can... Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. Like if Paladin were the one that were bonkers OP and everything else kind of sucks compared to, uh, compared to mm. Paladin, would I feel the same way? After a yeah. week or two, yeah, I would. I would feel. I mean, we way. had that happen with the stupid healing hand. Shit, oh right? yeah, we wait. We had. Like, that. We literally had that happen. <laughs> wait. Remember when everyone we did. was saying Paladin was the best thing since yeah. sliced was bread? Wait it a minute. Good. We did. We literally have that. had that. Yeah. That's funny. Like, so okay, what's what's right. the person say? They said we, there are other things that might or might not qualify as strong, but they're not really bonkers. Most of them should, uh, should be strong as Sorg. The big bonking skills don't really seem to be that good. 
it really feels like it'd be something workable if you build around it with struggle. Like, okay, so I don't. As, a lot of as, the skills you sign about are actually in a good spot right now. Their trees are just really fucking old, out yeah. of like volcanic or. Like, but the damage is not the problem with them right now. You can make them all do appropriate amounts of damage they're right just now. Thanks. Boring. To like they're they're yeah, so I think like boring is a good word. Yeah. There's so many. There's not. There's not. There's not so many good ones. But there there's there's good examples of interesting skill trees that allow you to build skills in different ways. Like detonating arrow when detonating arrow came out and you know this dread when when rogue mm. was new and detonating arrow came out people lauded detonating arrow skill tree as like you know the future of last epoch you can convert it to this you can convert it to that you can have an explosion you can have dot you can have poison you can have tendrils you can have big mana you can have you know charges built up over time and a lot of what hinders detonating arrow these days is the fact that the lightning tendrils get turned off if you do any conversion so no one ever does any conversion but that's besides well, the point. i mean that's partly because the the cold version has like the, it's got the free stuff which is very strong by the way but you have to eventually kill moms. You right. Can't just so, like, you know. So, like, at the beginning, there was detonating arrow being lauded for how good it was. And, like, we have other skill trees out there that are, you know, an interesting, excellent skill trees. When Avalanche got reworked, Dread, you and I were both talking about how interesting the Avalanche skill tree is. It can proc stuff. You can have big boulders, small boulders. There's more multipliers, but it's not just more multipliers. It's also things that mechanically change the skills. You can summon minions. Like a balanced have... earthquake. Yeah, it's cool. It's really, really cool. And, like, when you look at the skills that Sork has, Sork is Gigachad. The Sork Mastery, pretty fucking strong. The Sork Skills, like uh, Arcane Ascendance, Meteor, Black Hole. Like, what the fuck do those skills do? <laughs> They're so the bad. Thing why the like this is why the the nerfs are necessary and stuff like that. Like, why would I ever look at like Serpent Strike if I always have access mm. to like let's mm. say like uh swipe or whatever right swipe is a good skill mind you and i like where it is at right now it's mm -hmm. very good uh, in all sorts of things like it, it like i think out of all the skills right now other than frost claw i think that's like one of the ones with the, one of the best skill trees for the most part and the only problem i have with it is like the fro the claw totems suck but like yes that's yes like yes uh let, let's let's stay on mage for just a moment here yeah. like talking about we, we were talking about a, a, like the Sork Mastery that's insane and then all these other skills that are just like <clears throat> falling by the wayside. And uh, it, it, when they buff those skills, <clears throat> I like, are they going to nerf Sork and buff those skills at the same time? Because if they buff Black Hole, is it also going to be completely insane? I don't really know. Uh, and there's I a think, reason. So I think <clears throat> right now with like Black Hole, since it's like a dot, yeah like a spell dot it's kind of it kind of exists in different design space than let's say like ice barrage or something in meteor sure because so, if they make black i, I hole forgot good, to mention black ice barrage yeah. <laughs> they make um, black hole good it doesn't make like meteor any better or in that regard right? yeah Unless so so the reason things. the reason that i bring that up is it it's very close it, it parallels another complaint that you and i both had read which is the rat city spear whatever that mm. thing's called um the volcanic orb Rat void City conversion paler yeah whatever that thing is i literally it's, i don't Rat, Rat City paler oh lament of the lost refuge that's it there you go yeah yeah read the rat city spear um that spear objectively is a good item it has lots of damage it has interesting stuff it's got movement speed it changes the skill lament is a good item volcanic orb fucking sucks so like you have a good item you have an insane mastery with Sork, and then you have like Volcanic Orb, which some people technically say it's good, but the, the when, when people say Volcanic Orb sucks... Because it does a bunch of damage. It, it, it okay, can that's, deal... That's, it, yeah. Yes, it can deal damage. When people say Volcanic Orb sucks, me, when I say Volcanic Orb sucks, I mean the skill tree is atrocious and it hasn't been updated in a long fucking time. Yeah. When it gets updated, is it going to be after um, the Rat City Spear gets nerfed? Are they going to say, is it going to be after Sork gets nerfed? Like, it, you got yourself painted into a corner here from EHE's perspective because you have, like, this, the mastery is insane. The item's really strong. The skill's garbage. Like, are we going to fix all of these at the same time? Yeah, that's actually I don't a know. good point. That's a good segue to part of this as well, is this is why 
nerfs are uh, nerfs and changes are actually very good for the game because this is all work that could have been done before right like this is all things that like could have been done beforehand and now it's catching up to them in that regard right like for instance if they just i don't know like when they uh introduced rune master they just gave sork those nodes we would be a whole patch ahead in terms of balance right mm. in that regard and like there's a, like a lot of different things like for instance like if uh like i don't know i'm just trying to think of a good example here um think of a good example of a skill that like uh is going to cause them a lot of issues to rework because of all this because like Volatile reversal. Volatile reversal. Anomaly. Yeah, there you go. Imagine all the work that they're being caused. Yes. Uh, all the work being caused because they didn't nerf volatile reversal early enough. Because now what the problem is is like now everything around Sentinels bounced around mm -hmm. volatile reversal. The electrified yes. stuff is. The bleed stuff is. Everything is balanced around it, and now they have to go back and fix everything. Yes. Right? When they do this, otherwise Sentinel will be in the dumpster forever. Right. And if they just nerf volatile reversal before. Right, and they just had a more mindset of nerfing things more often than mm -hmm. than not. Right, uh, then like they wouldn't have added all those stuff for like Sentinel that required volatile reversal to function. Right, yeah. Then like it would be way less work in that regard. That's just like thinking towards the future. In that yeah, regard. yeah. So we we've detailed a lot of issues that we have like with the design of masteries and items and skills and and the relative balance of how it feels to play these things and those feelings are important because this is a video game and therefore entertainment and you want people to have fun while you're playing your video game emotions are important in this conversation so we started out this whole thing by looking at this youtuber's comments about do you want everything to suck What's your idea of balance relative to the mobs you're facing? What corruption level are you aiming, are you aiming at? As we progressed through these through this dissertation, uh, we we I I I started leaning more toward making fun of this person because I feel like they fell into a couple gaps of revealing that maybe they're doing something wrong, or maybe their argument was falling apart, or maybe they haven't logged in since 1.0. But I still feel like this was a like a good conversation to have because. I mean, not he was wrong the feelings are still valid like, yeah, it, yeah that the is feeling, a very that, that's good, good that's good that's a very good question to answer why are we nerfing things and to answer that is a very good yes answer because like people need to know like why do video why why does magic the gathering have like a rotating set that's yes. a good question to answer it feels bad when all my cards are no longer legal mm -hmm. but there's a reason for it mm -hmm. like why 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 are all, all these things nerfed before the new stuff comes out and path of exile there's a good reason for it yes. you think Path of Exile is bloated now imagine if they never nerfed anything so <laughs> we, we've detailed these things we've outlined complaints compliments things that we have about Last Epoch EHG currently we're in patch 1.1 refresh it's September 30th 2024 like they are focusing on bugs and performance and content and 1.2 and getting and end game <laughs> and end game and they, they're focused on so many things should they be focused on buffs and nerfs and balance i don't think they should i think give me give me give me give me 20 yeah, seconds go and then go oh, you're good. I, should they be focused on buffs and nerfs and balance i don't think they should because they have other things to focus on instead and I think that recognition is problematic because they have mm -hmm. so many things they got to work on. And this is a post 1.0 video game. And, and, and I'm sitting here as an experienced player, elite is whatever you want to call me. But like, I, I don't think that they should worry about this huge elephant in the room because they have other multiple huge elephants in the room. And that is well, a... I mean, remember before 1.0 and I was talking about like how like there wasn't enough end game going into 1.0 yeah. and yeah. everyone called me like a cynic bastard. Remember that? Well, like, I, I would say wait until 1.0 and then make a criticism and I'm ready to make it. Yeah, it's like, yeah, it's like I, I said that for good reason. But so for this kind of stuff, uh, the, the reason why we all care about game balance so much right now, why the community feels so strongly about and everything, is that's kind of all we really have. 
like in Path of Exile, when like my <laughs> build gets nerfed or whatever, right? I can still go do like sanctums. I can still go do five ways. I can still go do this and that. Like if my build gets nerfed in Last Epoch, I just go do monos, you know. Mm. And I think that's like another big problem is like because of the fact that there's a, a lack of end game content. Because like don't get me wrong, one of the facets of the ARPG is to have the character building and all that. But like yes. we gotta have something to do with those set. Once you get right? strong, who am I smashing? Yeah, exactly. Mm. All right, good. We could honestly go through multiple other YouTube comments. We're not going to. I've been recording for yeah, it's yeah. like I think I think this this probably encapsulates a lot of how we feel about other stuff too. So if you're out there, monochromatic spider, sorry dude, but you generated good conversation, so I appreciate the YouTube comment. I'm gonna hang up. Dread, I'll see you later, buddy. Yep, see ya. Time to go play ignite uh ignite uh frost claw, I guess, for you, huh? You it's, should go it's, play that now. It's OP. I know it's OP. You should go play it. Should I go play it? Go play it? I wanna go. Yeah. All right, maybe I'll go play. See you later. You're playing dude. COF, you need OP builds, right? To function. <laughs> That's what everyone says. It's true. My build sucks. All right, see you later. Yeah.